So hello everybody, welcome to this uh, meeting for the ODTN uh, use case team. Um, sorry for skipping last week's meeting, but I was on personal time off and uh, uh, thus I was not able to uh, join the call and start the call and, uh, and share it. So we will reply, reprise this week and uh, next week. Uh, in three weeks from now, I will be again on personal time off for a week. Uh, I hope uh, uh, somebody else like Hiroki could pick up the the call and share it for for three in three weeks. Uh, but we will discuss this next week. So as a status update, uh, the blog post for Phase One Point Zero is ready. Uh, both Infinera and the Nokia uh, videos were uh, cleared uh, for uh, release. So we are now able to. Um, publish this uh, this video and I'm in the process of talking with uh, Greg at the ONF uh, who is uh, our public relation and uh, a PR guy uh, to, to publish this in the news and in different sections of uh, the ONF itself uh, website and um, probably also LinkedIn. I will update everybody uh, on the state of this on the mailing list uh, as soon as it gets published. And thanks everybody for the awesome work that uh, you've put together to accomplish this uh, this phase 1.0 and the demo itself. Uh, regarding phase 1.5, uh, the state of uh, the uh, TAPI is that uh, uh, Karthik um, last week generated the TAPI connectivity Yang model and the TAPI photonic media Yang model. Uh, these are the two Yang models we will probably use for the um, for the control of the OLS itself in order to ask for uh, connectivity as a connectivity service, as we are currently doing on the northbound, and for the, the tuning of the Lambda. Uh, Karthik, anything to add? Uh, yeah, so I think Arturo has been reviewing the model and he has provided some comments. So I would be incorporating those comments into the next uh, version that I would probably sometime this week upload into the baseline. Okay, thanks for that. And I know. And I would, I would, I would actually welcome. I would ask others also to do that and mm -hmm. see like what we need to do or what we need to fix. Okay, I'm gonna add an action point for everybody here to review those. Uh, review. Uh, models and provide um, um, I know Stefan had a presentation that he wanted to do last week uh, do you know anything about it uh, no I mean I assume Stefan is not on the call today, so I don't know whether we can. No, do that. okay, maybe it was something. But yeah, I know, I know, like he wanted to do a presentation, but I'm not exactly sure what deck and what slides he wanted to do. Here. Okay, then I uh, will defer this to next week. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, assuming that he's going to do a subset of the slides that is on Tappy, but mm -hmm. but as he has and more than 120, 130 slides on Tappy contribution. <laughs> Okay. So I don't know which part he wanted to present here. <laughs> then maybe it's not the right uh, the right call to do that. So, in the relationship to uh, the discussion we had last week related to uh, phase one point five, uh, and that, that is ongoing since some some time, and uh, the OLS uh, workflow. Um, I went and um, did some digging on the existing Onos code base. And uh, uh, maybe Ramon could uh, also speak to this after I finish it. Basically, uh, we already have a set of elements that could uh, theoretically cover the use case we are we plan to do, meaning controlling the transponder the, and the OLS at the same time configuring the Lambda uh, through what is currently the Onos intent subsystem. So as far as I know, uh, Ramon and the people from the um, Metro Hall project are currently working and have this working in uh, their lab on a system based on Onos 
that uh, using the optical intent that I'm currently showing here, uh, using this uh, particular optical intent, this is just an example, are capable of provisioning a transponder plus rhodum network from the um, line side port of the transponder to the line side port of the transponder. It does not take care of the client side to line side integration, but that is something that we have done in phase one and I've done some digging and it's possible to do it also through in the intent subsystem. And in particular, I want to point out to everybody that this particular uh, code that they are using already supports a specific Lambda uh, provisioning. Uh, where the, um, this particular notation is, uh, uh, in this case, four is the number of slots, 50 is the spacing, and 12 is the channel position. And then it's uh, WDM is the grid type. So as far as my understanding, phase 1.5 could be covered using this. Uh, existing code. Uh, Ramon, do you want to add anything to it? Uh, I, I, do you hear me? Yes. I, I can comment a bit on it. Uh, as you said, it's not exactly an OLS subcontroller. We are working directly on open config plus open rodom devices. So we are controlling uh, directly the open rodom device. And as you said, I wanted to say something about this last week, but uh, for the sake of time, I didn't. What we are doing is we are reusing most of the already existing uh, optical intents code that it's already in ONOS, and we can provision an end-to-end -end service. Uh, this is basically using existing code, which is able to request the status of the lambdas of each device. Or the per -per I don't want to go too much technical if you're interested drop me an email or talk to me and but basically you can request on a per port the status of the lambdas with a flexi grid granularity there is already a uh, dextra path computation so you, given the onos topology you have a dextra path computation and then onos already checks which wavelengths are available end to end and that's the first fit uh, routing and spectrum assignment and once this is done and you have your path and your uh, wavelength or flexibility slot, if you want to call it like this, then ONOS itself uh, calls the uh, what's called the flow rule programmable behavior and requests the device of the interface to actually set up a flow. And in the context of optical, basically you get the incoming port and OCH signal outgoing port plus OCH signal. So you can basically program the cross connect. This is basically to say that uh, with the already existing optical connectivity intent in ONOS, it is already today possible to request an end-to-end -end optical service. And uh, it, you can end up configuring the NetConf uh, devices of uh, open config devices and open Rodom devices. Now, this was macroscopic, the idea. Uh, an open line system, it's a slightly different. So many, it, it is still possible if we have uh, this the same framework, if we add some extra code in which the OLS somehow becomes a, a device or a proxy device that exports a notion of port that could be the TAPI service interface port or something like this. So if we model the OLS system as a single device with a set of ONOS ports, I guess it would be quite easy to uh, reuse the optical connectivity intent for phase 1.5. I keep it short, I'll stop it there if you have questions, feel free. Just to iterate on that, uh, my thought for phase 1.5 was architecture was the following. Uh, if uh, everybody agrees on this, we could start maybe uh, seeing an implementation of it. The idea is that uh, this is what Ramon was talking about, the optical connectivity intent. 
And this is a bit simplified. Uh, the internals of Onos are a bit more complicated, but the idea is that you could reuse the optical connectivity intent, then the flow rule programmable. In phase 1.0, we use the configurable transceiver for uh, uh, creating the cross connect. We would need to do that too here, but it's code that is already there. Uh, and have an, an OLS equivalent behavior in the future that generates an XML payload that, that sends that, that gets sent down to the device. What we would need to do is this part over here. Because uh, the, the problem is that at the moment, uh, TAPI, it gets immediately uh, converted into the configurable transceiver behavior. There is no middle ground here. Um, but that does not provide the scale and the um, end-to-end -end path computation with the topology service that we would need. So we would need to translate basically TAPI to the optical connectivity intent. And this would be the major bulk of the work, if I'm not mistaken. Any thoughts? Um, this is Ramon speaking again. Uh, this is precisely what we are intending to do. It, it's still not done, but I would say that it's quite straightforward, basically because uh, requesting an optical connectivity intent, as you as you showed before, it's a, a command line interface. It's a one-liner. It's basically providing the endpoints a little more, and that command line uh, command basically maps into a create intent. So it's uh, a, like a 10 to 20 lines of code. Once you get from the TAPI request, the actual ONOS ports. What this ONOS command is doing, it's basically getting netconf 163, blah, 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 blah. This is a port, and the other one is another port. So once you parse this, you have a Java class that is basically create optical intent, and you pass these two parameters, and everything else is done automatically. So I guess that mapping or adding that code where you get the TAPI request towards the creation of the intent, it's, I would say, relatively straightforward, not very complicated. What I'm a bit more concerned about, if you can go back to your previous slide, uh, where you have the diagram here, is actually, but sorry if you didn't talk about this too much, is the device synchronizer. What we've been doing it's uh, basically implementing the behaviors and using let's say low level netconf session methods where you can um, send the edit configs and that kind of, of, of messages to the device the device synchronizer I'm not very familiar with this I think it's UTES was the main developer it somehow it tries to map the status of the device into the DCS, if I'm not mistaken. So you yes. get your representation of the device. Uh, but I have very little experience, and I think it's a, it's a still a very I don't know early code or raw code, or not, not very familiar with that part. Yes, um, I, I agree with you, Ramon. I believe that in a first phase, what we could do is uh, skip these three components. Uh, the this one this one and this one, the net CFG, the device cache and device synchronizer. This is more of the end goal of having also the information stored in the DCS or in an equivalent form of DCS. Uh, but at the moment we could uh, go directly through root programmable to the net session without having to go through these components because that's what you guys are already doing and that's what I know works. But as I've said, it can be augmented with uh, these existing pieces of code at a later time to support the storage and um, and rollback and um, like dry run and all those requirements we have for the ODTN and end goal. Does that make sense? Does it make sense, Ramon? No, no, sorry, I, I was muted and I was talking alone. Uh, it, it makes sense, but um, my, my concern is, is it's just still a very, uh, I don't know, complicated piece of code. 
uh, we have had uh, plenty of reservations with the status of the of the DCS. Actually, Hiroki is online and he can comment on. He had to implement some kind of proxy because having access to the DCS was a slow. Uh, so it's it's to me it's a bit a, a green field and uh, it makes sense what you say. I'm unable to say how complex it will end up being mm -hmm. once we have a proof of concept working with directly with net concessions. Changing that mm -hmm. to use a device synchronizer, it can be a, 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 an important task. Mm -hmm. Hiroki, any comments? Uh, I agree with the Laman, but uh, <coughs> uh, in my opinion, it is a critical and important point of the uh, audit and the project and mm -hmm. the implementation. So, uh, and w uh, in my opinion, we, we can't avoid to implement this kind of uh, synchronizer so uh, in the near future we have we should focus on to implement uh, device synchronizer and uh, something like configuration uh, subsystem uh -huh. I, mm -hmm. I i complete i i agree the fact that uh, i was thinking that this approach could help us uh, divide the effort clearly in two pieces without uh, having one piece depend on the other. Um, what uh, I mean is that uh, uh, we could uh, provide a very small piece of code here that uh, at the first time is a very uh, uh, dumb piece of code that just stores the configuration and synchronizes it across the cluster. And in the meantime, we develop also this and this uh, to a full-fledged extent. But uh, the work that is getting done for the OLS in the behavior in the behavior realm, or the code that is being done in the translation from TAPI to the intent, does not depend on the fact that DCS is currently here and working and existing, because I feel that in the past. Uh, the project has been uh, slowed down in his networking part by the fact that uh, DCS was not up to par. So what my proposal goes, uh, the direction my proposal goes to is that uh, we will do, we will use the optical connectivity intent to do path computation inside Onus because that's already working. And uh, we will try and compartmentize the networking side, which is the TAPI request, uh, the programmability of the, tra the transponder and the OLS from what DCS is. So we can focus on both at the same time without one hindering the other. Does that make sense? Uh, Ramon speaking again, yes, it makes sense. I have a, a small concern because it's not clear to me uh, all the details. Basically, what we're doing in Onos, the northbound interface, this is mostly based on RESTConf. Yes. And as far as I know, Onos doesn't have doesn't have a NetConf server. Yes. On the other hand, you're, if you go if you go SBI, you have a NetConf session. Mm -hmm. This is assuming somehow that the OLS controller will have a NetConf server. Um, as far as I know, we have a mismatch here unless we implement some kind of RESTConf SBI or uh, the OLS has a NetConf server. Yes and no. Uh, in my opinion, it does not assume that the OLS has a NetConf server. In this image, it says NetConf session because that's what we kind of expect people to implement, but nothing prevents you to... Let me see if I can do it uh, right away. Nothing prevents you to do something like this. Okay, so you would have an additional driver where you implement REST for LS. Exactly. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's really depending on the need of the device itself. And obviously, we would definitely suggest uh, to have uh, NetConf because that's what we mainly work with. But since REST is already there in Onos or whatever other protocol that we have, we could use. 
So it's not okay. really strictly connected to the fact that we use NetConf. And uh, really, and, and, uh, uh, OLS. Yeah, sorry, another, another comment. Yes. In in this sense, I just read it on the on the. On, I can write it in the minutes. Uh, you may want to look for the Achino project. It's A C I N O. Yes. yes. They put on, on on some GitHub. They have some kind of tappy proxy, and I am I'm. I'm I'm not very familiar. I checked it one year ago or something. They have some kind of implementation of a driver that mm -hmm. basically speaks Tappy on the SBI. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they, they implement their own behaviors and they implement something like a proxy network and proxy device. Mm -hmm. So you can represent a, a network and you can, maybe we can reuse part of that code for ODTN. Yes, I was aware of the effort that was made, that was done by CreateNet, and especially the yeah. likes of uh, Michele, Domenico, and Matteo. Uh, I've reached out yeah. to them. Uh, they told me that it's based on a very early version of Tapi, which is uh, somewhat uh, a bit, a, a very old, let's, say, let's put it this way. So it's uh, not as aligned as we would like. But uh, I will dive deeper into this project and see how much we can reuse. Uh, but the problem still stands that we currently have no working OLS for our uh, implementation. What I really like of this approach, uh, well, th this, this approach using the optical connectivity intent is that as you have shown, uh, you and the people of the Metro Hall project, Going from phase 1.5 to phase 2.0 would just would just be a matter of changing the devices. If I'm not mistaken. Correct? Again, I'm not sure I follow. Okay, can you can you repeat that? In the sense that in phase 1.5 we want to achieve a point-to-point -point solution with the OLS in the middle. But uh, you guys at Metro Hall already achieved a mesh rodum solution. Yes, yes. So using the optical connectivity intent and providing that mapping from the TAPI northbound to the optical connectivity intent would enable us to uh, shift to phase 2.0, the phase where we want to go with open rodum devices, with very low effort. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, in our in our project, we we have like a, the tar we're targeting uh, November December to have a, a working a full working prototype with any kind of mesh network. Mm -hmm. So and then the intent is of course to merge both codes and to submit them to DTN. So yeah, I think it's because of the project goals that we went directly to 2.0. Uh -huh. But yeah, I think we're quite in line and uh, it should be straightforward. But we're doing basically the same thing. Uh, I'm at some point I'm mapping the TAPI connectivity RPC endpoints. I'm getting the uh, and then creating the optical connectivity intent. Oh, there are I, technical details that we can discuss this offline or via the OTN. Yes, no, uh, absolutely. Uh, but uh, this piece of translation, or are you are you already doing it? Um, I want to do it in the pre in the, in the upcoming uh, weeks. It's basically oh. now we have. The optical clip, CLI, sorry, yes, yeah. and uh, on the other hand, we have the the processing of the TAPI RPC. Mm -hmm. So we, the processing of the TAPI RPC, we have the ports. Mm -hmm. So it's a straightforward. The only thing that we need to do is everything related to the signal mapping. That's something that we are not. We're assuming basically a, a, a lambda. So all the mapping of the TAPI signal parameters, especially with TAPI 2.1, towards the actual intent signal it mm -hmm. needs to be done okay yeah i think we should uh, we should take this offline and maybe we can have a a conference call on with everybody who is interested in uh, this piece of the code in order to do it uh, to put together a plan and do and do some details i can i can actually schedule that uh, if uh, you are you would be available ramon okay let's target uh, starting from next week i must Still on holidays, so if it's still uh, absolutely um, starting from 20, 28.
Yeah, Dave, could you propose a uh, what would what would the architecture be on that 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 flow diagram that you'd had, or how would it change if you were running DCS in parallel? Um, um, I mean, what would be the? I mean, how would that work, and and how would it remerge in the future? I guess I'm trying to understand that. Yes. So. Uh, the the real components that DCS would is addressing in or needs to address in my my point of view is maintaining two things. One is the request that comes from the northbound, in the sense that uh, uh, the request is mapped through the Tapi Yang model, and thus we need to maintain that request in the dynamic configuration in order for us to be able to access it uh, when a modification happens to it. And this is uh, this component this component here, which is already done in ONUS, so we shouldn't care about that. Uh, the second component that the DCS cares about is device configuration. So on the northbound is service configuration, on the southbound is device configuration. And this goes back to the discussion we were having before with Ramon regarding uh, these components over here. Uh, in the solution that Ramon is pursuing and then the implementation that is currently existing in ONOS, uh, with the optical intents, there is no saving and no capability of doing rollback, dry run, and the um, validation of the modeling and um, like incremental upgrades of the configuration. It's simply handcrafted XML from the behavior, which is this guy, to the session, skipping everything in between. What would DCS do is add capability in there to store the tree of the configuration existing on the device to be capable of achieving uh, configuration operations such as end-to-end um, -end rollback. Okay, uh, we are configuring 10 devices. The eighth device failed. We need to roll back the previous seven. So in, in this southbound piece over here, we would, uh, DCS would address these elements. And that is why I was proposing this two compartments approach. One that deals with the network uh, towards a pretty simple API. And then this API gets, the implementation of this API uh, gets done completely in DCS um, and gets swapped from the very simple one we were using for the networking side. Did this answer your question? Well, partially, I mean, I, so you're saying network. Um, I mean, I guess maybe I would think of that as network provisioning. So there's no view I mean, until the DCS comes fully online. You have the topology service uh, to the right up there off of the op optical connectivity intent. So I, I guess that's not currently going to be instantiated um they're basically going to be just a direct flow through as you basically the center path here and it's going to kind of not make the instantiation calls to the dcs or to the topology service so that those databases are updated and as you said you can do the rollbacks and all this other um that that's not going to be done initially do i understand that right is that what you're proposing and basically this could be a pass through of the topology of the, of the tabby uh request will be converted to an optical connectivity uh, intent and then just flow pretty much uh, straight down, I guess, with uh, going to the configurable transceivers and then um, back up to XML and down to either the OLS or net comp session to the uh, transceivers themselves. Yes and no. On the northbound, since we already have that uh, notion and capability of storing the topology and the net conf and the rest conf request, from TAPI, we will store it and we will update it and we will keep it in DCS as we currently do. Okay. What I what I, I mentioned here with the topology service, that's the honest topology service, meaning uh, the distributed topology store that saves the device, uh, the internal representation in honest of the device. That, that has no 
mention of Tapi whatsoever in this component over here. This is the internal ONO store. On the southbound, yes, you're correct in assuming that at the start it would be a pass-through, while in the meantime we develop the DCS. This would be my preference in order not to like go too slow on one side and not achieve any milestone because the other side is blocking it. Okay, it sounds sounds like it can be uh, maybe firewall is the wrong term, but but it, but at least isolated to use your word uh, compartmented from each other uh, until uh, until there's a maturity on the DCS side. So, um, yeah. This is from a couple of comments. I think Hiroki had already some code committed in the master branch where you he actually constructs the TAPI topology elements based on events coming from the honest topology servers. So every time that there is a, a node that it's added or a link that it's added, it's already there is some code, I don't know if it's fully compliant, that adds the nodes and elements into the DCS following the TAPI model. That's already something which is enables you to retrieve topological details by the uh, a client using a REST conf call. This is somehow important to have a, an, ID, an updated topology. And the second point is, it's important to note, and this is what uh, Andrea was mentioning before, we had a lot of troubles with the DCS, and this is why we pick the RPC version of the request. In short, we, we did this because we know that when we get the event of the RPC, all the data in the request is there in the connectivity service RPC. So we don't need to start fetching in the DCS tree all the parameters, and we, we don't have a reliable method to know if the request is completed. So this is still something that it, we can follow that model. Requests are going to be RPC-based because they are self-contained, but that does not mean that we can still add the services and topological elements to the TAPI model, which are being triggered by topology services events. And this is something that is somehow already working. Yes. Okay. So, since I, uh, I believe this would, is there any other, sorry, before I go forward, any other comments? Okay, great. Uh, if not, I can prepare a more in detail presentation about this, uh, architectural presentation, and uh, uh, I will schedule a call with uh, um, uh, everybody who is interested. I'll send it out on the mailing list, but mainly Ramon and uh, people who have already worked with uh, optical connectivity intents and uh, also Hiroki who worked on uh, the TAPI northbound to iron out those details of mapping the DCS-based connectivity service to the optical connectivity intent um, next week, hopefully on Monday. So by Tuesday, we can have uh, Monday or Tuesday. So by Tuesday next week, we can have a pretty clear view of the code that needs to be done. And this will enable us to actually go forward with phase 1.5, even if we don't have a currently working OLS with TAPI 2.1, because we can use a simulator to emulate uh, the OLS, and uh, we will use what Hiroki provided with the TAPI 2.1, since the model is uh, almost done. And uh, we will try and uh, develop the code on the on side towards the OLS with the emulator. Uh, the only doubt on the northbound I have, and here I want to ask the experts of uh, optical and TAPI especially, is that right now the optical connectivity intent, as we have seen here, uh, asks for a specific Lambda configuration. That with TAPI 2.0.2, .2, which is what we used on top of ONOS before, was not available. But that, to my understanding, would be available in TAPI 2.1. Is that correct? 
Ja, ja. Oké, okay. so on the, on the north bound of Onos, if we want to include the wavelength, we need tapi 2.1. Right. Okay. More specifically, you need the photonic media yang. So if you only intend, so that's what like where I was discussing with Stefan, we are thinking of like basically two approaches based on the previous discussions because mm -hmm. we are not sure what the team's uh, preference is. One is like you use the generic TAPI, right, which is what I think Aturo and Ramon were talking about before Telefonica. And when you use generic TAPI, you can only request capacity, right? And if you want to then go specific wavelength, any kind of photonic media parameters like specific wavelength, then you have to use a photonic media uh, argument. And when I say generic TAPI, I mean TAPI connectivity dot end. Um, so well, it's really up to the group. If, they, if you want to use some photonic parameters, we have to use photonic media dot yank. Uh, sorry, um, Karthi, can you repeat what the TAPI connectivity yank model has? Uh, the, the thing. So the TAPI connectivity uh, yank, in the simplest terms, is to you can request connectivity between two points. Mm -hmm. We call it service interface points, mm -hmm. and how much capacity you need between them. Now that capacity has an uh, is pretty generic because you can you can specify it either it's in gigahertz or in gigabytes or there are different units. So we have to use the most relevant unit, but that's what TAPI connectivity at its simplest provides, right? And you can add more constraints on this connectivity request, but all those are again generic parameters. Like you know you can have some hops or you can have some routes, like in terms of like which nodes or which links to use or exclude links and things like that. But all of them are generic. The moment you want to go to photonic specific attributes, like technology specific information, you have to use photonic media audience. Because that one augments the static connectivity with photonic attributes. Okay. Like lambda is the simplest one, of course. Mm -hmm. like, and we use the word, I mean, we use the word lambda pretty generically, but of course, it's generally like central frequency and the width or like some spacing and so on. But yeah, so then you have to use the photonic media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, this is Roman again. If 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 I could just state my preference because it's in line with what we're doing with Telefonica and Quinit, and it's it would be great if we could request the equivalent of a network media channel, which is then stretch to fully map it to the OLS or the an open rhythm. And uh, in short, it means the frequency slot. If we're going to specify the frequency slot in terms of the nominal central frequency and the slot width, that's mm -hmm. more than enough, at least for us. I agree with yeah. Karthik. Capacity only, it was like a, a milestone. It, it's good to request some capacity, and then the, the system assigns you the first request that you can. But if we can specify the, the network media channel, it would be great for our use case. And I, then I understand that you you need the TAPI photonic media. Is that right? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, I will update um, the transponder workflow and the OLS workflow documents uh, um, based on the discussion we will have next week for the use of intents but the idea is that uh, in here we will reuse what the configurable transceiver class that was already developed for phase 1.0 and just augment it with the proper wavelength and uh, and frequency uh, needs also on the transponder side and then we will come up with a new behavior for the OLS that enables us to Basically, do a request of the top of uh, wavelength and network media channel and uh, the connectivity with TAPI 2.1. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll address that uh, incrementing these two documents. Um, and yes, sorry, I'm talking a lot to, uh, as well. Um, was something that we found in in our test is that current 
ONOS optical model has very, let's say, limited support for flexi grid. Uh, we had in the past yes. some discussions with Mark and so on. It, 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 they don't have the notion of media layer or the uh, or the OTSI or that kind of, let's say, I to key. I understand that it's somehow it's a, it's a stretching the the fixed grid optical model to support, uh, let's say, variable sized OCH signals. But I'm not sure what we can find in the future or if there is some, how can we improve the existing optical model in ONOS? to fully support flexi grid because it's still something to, to me not very clear okay i would uh, i cannot give you an answer right now i would need to probably go in more depth and study this a bit myself before uh getting you an answer on that uh any i mean we can discuss maybe this more a bit more offline and if you could send me an email with uh, the com the things that you see lacking and uh, why okay you, you think it would be difficult to augment on us for with this uh, it would be great so I can uh, also myself understand better and see what will be the proper implementation of this but in my opinion okay. this does not hinder our capability of going forward with phase one to five and phase two zero yes it would still be a fixed grid. We would not be able to completely tune on a flex grid basic, a flex grid, but we could still go for phase one to five and phase two to zero as a fixed grid, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. There are, there are workarounds that are, I wouldn't call them hacks, but it, it can be done, but it's done by, by using multiple lambdas and assuming that they are one after the other. So yeah, let's put put off this for the moment. Okay. We can move on with FlexiGrid, but it's not, uh, let's say, clean from the point of view of terminology. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, yes, an update on the open config models. Uh, Arturo, do you want to take this on if you're on the call? Yes. Hi, Andrea, this is Arturo. Uh, sorry, I started uh, a little bit later in the call today. Um, yeah, actually, I didn't update uh, anything else from the latest uh, update that I provided uh, last week. Uh, what I did, basically, it was to double check what was the uh, list of models that they were, um, uh, let's say, uh, specify in the latest official release of Open Config, and I updated the table with the uh, latest version and um, release date of each of the models that uh, from Telefonica uh, Global CTO we uh, analyze and uh, employ in our internal test uh, during the, the previous months. So. I don't well. I, I didn't have any uh, or, or noted uh, that I I had any further action points on this. Uh, do you uh, have any question or or it was any pending uh, task that I didn't? Uh, no, 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 no. That's that's perfectly fine. I think we have an agreement on that list since uh, we left it there and uh, no comments came. So we have an agreement that uh, the open config models that uh, the ODTM project should push for the future are those. And um, at least we have uh, also something to put in the RD document. So I think uh, that's, that's uh, set in stone and done. I will start a similar thread uh, to specify the versions of uh, the TAPI models that we would need in the future. But uh, until TAPI 2.1 is released, we don't have the final version. So that's fine. OK, next, uh, next up is something that I want to talk to you about everybody about is the ONF Connect uh, event that uh, we have the 4th to the 7th of uh, uh, the 4th to the 7th of uh, December uh, 6th sorry of December in um, Santa Clara um, and this would be a, a big uh, event organized by the ONF and it, it will have an ODTN track um, so 
I think it would be a very good time to meet in person. I already know that the the TAPI team uh, will be at uh, the ONF Connect. I will be there, and I hope that many of you can make the trip. You can find all the information at this link. Um, we uh, will have a, a set of tracks. Uh, one of them will be ODTN. Uh, our idea is also to put out a call for papers of people working on ODTN to provide their presentation. So, for example, uh, Ramon and the Metro Hall project could showcase uh, uh, their implementation with uh, the open roadmap models. Uh, Telefonica and Nokia could showcase their own implementation and uh, NTT and Infinera or NEC could showcase their own. I would like to ask uh, Hiroki, Arturo and Yuta, uh, Yuta is not on the call, uh, to review these presentations and make sure they're relevant to the call uh, for papers that we are issuing and with the content that we will have at uh, the event. I myself will also be reviewing. Hiroki Arturo, would that be fine with you if you would send uh, the proposals that we receive and uh, you would uh, review them? Yeah, that's fine. Yes, yes, it's fine. Okay, perfect. And uh, I think also uh, we, as a great team, we should meet in person uh, at the event, uh, as I said before. Um, Please, so set it on your calendar. I will try to reserve uh, a room uh, beforehand at ONF itself um, for us to meet uh, maybe a couple of days to iron out the last details about phase 1.5 because I hope that uh, uh, we can have a phase 1.5 demo at uh, the ONF uh, Connect. Um, so I will give you more details about the, the days that we could have um, a meeting uh, at ONF uh, aside from the conference. Uh, uh, would you guys prefer before or after the conference itself? It would be December the 4th to December the 6th. So, so it will be... Andrea, for... Sorry, Andrea. Uh, for from my side, I I cannot commit uh, that I could uh, assist uh, personally there. Um, Victor is, I think, is managing to to, to stay there. Well, no, uh, well, Andrea, this is Victor. I, I tried internally to extend uh, my internship, but it's not gonna be possible. So mm. I'm leaving first of December, and I didn't got the the budget approval to stay longer. So from our side, it's uh, going to be hard to uh, to attend to the conference. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks, Victor. That that. Thanks for the for the knowledge. Uh, what I would uh, maybe possibly do is have an in-person meeting of the team uh, the week before, uh, meaning uh, the last week of November. Would that be a possibility for everybody? If uh, we could arrange an in-person meeting of the ODTN use case team in ONF the week before. Um, I will try to. Uh, For me, I'm, mm -hmm. I'll be here. So, but uh, I understand that uh, if someone has to travel, maybe it's a lot of time uh, there in the US. I don't know. Okay. I will uh, try and schedule uh, a day, maybe Friday or Thursday, so we can have a, a meeting over there and uh, send out uh, the. Um, The details to everybody and see who can uh, attend and uh, thanks bill it's called for presentations not papers we're not like publishing any papers it's just a presentation of uh, the work thanks for the note bill uh okay last point on the agenda i believe yes state of the drivers so the nokia driver is done ready to be merged uh hiroki do you have any update on the refactoring of the infinera one 
Uh, yes, and the entity labs member uh, have completed to implement their driver and refactoring, but mm -hmm. now they are testing <coughs> of the uh, driver, but now they are facing some issues with the latest on us. Yes. Um, 1.14 and now they're uh, asking maybe maybe about the issue and discussing and they're uh, focusing on how to uh, resolve the issue. So mm -hmm. after that, maybe they can uh, upload to the gallery to review. Okay. Uh, pending issue in DCS, I believe. Yeah, I know. Yes, exactly. I believe I know which issue you've been talking about. I'm talking myself with Tom and Jordan about it. Uh, they were they are very busy with the release of 1.14, but I mm -hmm. I asked this to be a, a blocker for the 1.14 release in order for us to put out 1.14 with this bug fixed. Okay, thanks. Uh, Ramon, uh, Metro Hall Open Config. There are not many changes uh, in this sense. And I don't know if uh, Alessio could say something else, but he's not on, on the call. Uh, open Config, basically, what we miss is the mapping of the flow rule towards the actual configuration of Open Config. This is why it was useful what Arturo sent to the mailing list of what kind of use cases. Mm -hmm. But since so we don't, we, myself personally, I don't have a transceiver to work with. I'm not working on this detail much more than that. It's basically mapping the flow rule towards the whatever XML you end up sending to the transceiver. So this is still in, on hold. And for Metro Hall, we are, as I mentioned before, targeting open rhythms. But since it's still not uh, in the scope of, uh, of ODTN, I'm postponing these details a bit more. Okay. So, in short, for the open config driver, I know that Alessio has worked a bit more on their specific transceivers that they have on site. Mm -hmm. And what is missing, what is existing in the OTM code, as I mentioned in the previous weeks, mm -hmm. is finally mapping this flow rule programmable behavior to whatever XML. And this is why we don't have a clear 100% view of what are the different partners of OTM willing to do if they assume already existing OCH and so on. So no further details on that. Okay. Uh, little update on Cassini. That's the state, same same state as uh, last week. Uh, so as last point, uh, we're still building the configuration document uh, uh, with the details about the DCS 2.0 uh, that I and we discussed before. Um, that is coming up uh, uh, soon after the release of 1.14, since uh, I want the opinion and uh, uh, knowledge of Thomas and Jordan and other components of the ONF team to be put into the document uh, before uh, we release this proposal to the public. But please do read it if you want and uh, hear some and discuss uh, some points, comment on it. Okay. Uh, any other topics? If uh, if not, uh, thanks everybody for connecting. Uh, I will um, issue a one-time uh, meeting request for next week uh, in order for everybody who is interested to participate in the discussion about uh, uh, low-level details of uh, the northbound mapping uh, of TAPI towards the optical connectivity intent. Uh, for probably Monday, Tuesday next week. And I will do a better presentation about the optical connectivity intent solution that uh, we will pursue so everybody can know what that is uh, in more detail. Uh, so thanks, everybody, and uh, see you next week. And we can continue any discussion that is needed on, on the mailing lists. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank you.